of the countryside with their graceful cones and craggy peaks. Volcanoes draw millions of people to work on their slopes and live in their shadows. For many, volcanoes are symbols of power and life, capable of terrifying eruptions, but also providers of rich, fertile soils on which we depend for food. Volcanoes remain quiet most of the time. So quiet, we often forget their violent and destructive natures. An ancient Japanese proverb tells an important truth. A natural calamity will strike at about the time the terror of the last one is forgotten. Sooner or later, people living near a volcano will face the dangers of an erupting volcano. An eruption can inflict enormous damage on cities and farmland and disrupt our lives for weeks, months, even years at a time. Human suffering can be immense. This program will show you the dangerous behavior of volcanoes. It's meant to help you see, understand, and remember the ways in which an erupting volcano can affect your life and your community. A volcano can produce many different types of activity. Some are more harmful than others. We will look at seven types of volcanic hazards. Ash falls, hot ash flows, mud flows, volcanic landslides, volcanic tsunamis, lava flows, and volcanic gases. First, we will consider ash falls. An exploding volcano blasts molten rock and ash into the air with tremendous force. The heaviest fragments fall back to the ground, usually within a few kilometers of the vent. But the dust-sized ash fragments continue to rise into the air, forming a huge billowing cloud of ash. This is the most common type of activity produced by explosive eruptions. The largest eruptions spew ash for hours at a time. Some continue erupting ash for several days to weeks. The ash clouds can be enormous, reaching more than 30 kilometers above a volcano in only 30 minutes. Once in the air, particles of ash drift with the wind the smallest particles may be carried hundreds of kilometers downwind from a volcano, filling the sky with a dark cloud of ash as far as the eye can see. When ash falls back to the ground, it turns everything deathly gray. Falling ash can strip leaves and limbs from trees. If enough ash falls, fruit orchards and entire forests are left barren. A thick layer of ash can destroy crops and leave farmland unworkable for weeks or months at a time. Fields can be made useless for grazing animals, and water may be unsuitable for drinking. Falling ash affects people farther from an erupting volcano than any other type of activity. For thousands of square kilometers, roads and houses are blanketed with ash. Water supplies, communication systems, and power generators can be shut down completely. If enough ash falls on a house or building, the extra weight can form holes in the roof or cause it to collapse entirely, injuring and sometimes killing people inside. Falling ash destroyed the roof of this church during a recent eruption of El Chichon volcano in Mexico. Ash also makes driving difficult by creating a choking cloud that makes it impossible for drivers to see where they're going. Falling ash usually creates a very dense haze, sometimes turning day into night and creating a darkness that light can't penetrate. It's an eerie darkness and will last for as long as the ash falls. For some people, 
Ash makes breathing strenuous, and it irritates their eyes. In an attempt to filter the abrasive ash, people make dust masks from a variety of materials. Ash is also very dangerous to aircraft. It severely abrades windows, wings, and especially engines. If a jet flies into an ash plume, its engines can stop completely. In the past 10 years, many planes have encountered ash, and three jumbo jets nearly crashed when they temporarily lost power because of the ash. Falling ash is not nearly as life-threatening as some of the other types of volcanic activity, but it can severely disrupt our lives for long periods of time. Far more deadly are ash flows, the next volcanic hazard. In addition to clouds of ash that rise above a volcano, some explosive eruptions produce avalanches of hot ash, rock, and gas that move at high speeds down the slopes of a volcano. Ash flows are the most destructive type of volcanic activity. They are extremely hot and can move across the ground as fast as several hundred kilometers per hour. Ash flows knock down and burn everything in their paths. Few living things can survive an ash flow. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 generated an extremely large ash flow that completely devastated an area of 600 square kilometers. Close to Mount St. Helens, forests were stripped completely from hills. Trees two meters in diameter were mowed down like blades of grass 25 kilometers from the volcano. Logging equipment was tossed about like toys. Everything in the path of the ash flow was destroyed. Cars not mangled by the ash flow were buried with rock debris. Ash flows are difficult to observe because they're extremely dangerous and move quickly. An ash flow cannot be outrun. As an ash flow moves down the side of a volcano, it usually pours into canyons and river valleys. But at the bottom of the volcano, it can spread out across the land into populated areas. An ash flow swept down this Mexican volcano, El Chichon, and into the village of San Francisco Leon in 1982. Everything but the foundation of the church was swept away. One of the most destructive ash flows this century swept through the city of St. Pierre, only seven kilometers from Mount Pele volcano. The city was completely destroyed. 29,000 people died. The ash flows knocked down buildings and homes, and the hot ash started fires that burned through the city for hours. Pictures of St. Pierre before and after the eruption show its complete destruction. The theater. A crowded city street. Only two men survived, and even they were badly burned. The deaths caused by the eruption of Mount Pele shocked the world and alerted people to the dangers of ash flows. But this type of tragedy is repeated at some other volcano every few years, like here on a small island in the Philippines, or by the eruption of Mount Lamington volcano in Papua, New Guinea. Now we will discuss volcanic mud flows, which are as dangerous as ash flows. Volcanic mud flows are floods of water, mud, sand, and rock that rush down river valleys. Mud flows turn normally quiet rivers into torrents of debris moving as fast as 50 kilometers per hour.
since mud flows contain so much mud, sand, and rocks, they look like fast-moving rivers of wet concrete. They have the strength to rip huge boulders from the ground and carry them 50 kilometers or more down valley. Mud flows are just as dangerous as ash flows. They can uproot and destroy everything in their paths. Giant logs are tossed around as if they were matchsticks. Bridges can be damaged or completely swept away, disrupting transportation routes for days and weeks at a time. Houses are no match for mud flows. They float and can be ripped apart in seconds. Whatever is not carried away by a mud flow is left buried in mud and sand, sometimes beneath 10 to 30 meters of debris. One of the world's most tragic mud flows occurred when Nevado del Ruiz volcano in Colombia erupted hot ash flows that melted some of the volcano's snow and ice. Water from the melting snow raced down river valleys, ripping up trees and boulders along the way. About two hours after the eruption, the mud flows reached the town of Armero, 50 kilometers away. The town was destroyed and buried by mud and debris. More than 20,000 people were killed. Where there was once a thriving community, only mud and rocks remained. Rescue was nearly impossible because the mud was often too deep or too soft to cross. The residents of Armero did not fully understand the destructive potential of volcanic mud flows. They could have walked to higher ground and safety before the mud flow reached their town. It was this tragic misunderstanding that inspired this program. The next volcanic hazard, giant volcanic landslides, was only recently brought to the attention of scientists by the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in the United States. Volcanoes are formed by countless eruptions of molten rock that often build steep cones several kilometers above the surrounding mountains and valleys. Their cones are weakly constructed. A volcano is built layer by layer of lava flows and ash, like a giant layer cake. The layers are loose, and rocks frequently roll down the steep flanks of a volcano. But huge chunks of a volcano can also break away, suddenly and without warning. Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980 and generated the largest historic volcanic landslide. Before the eruption, molten rock pushed its way up into the volcano, forcing one side outward and causing thousands of cracks in the snow. The north flank of Mount St. Helens was marked by a large bulge that had been pushed out more than 100 meters in only two months. This cartoon was created to show what happened when the volcano finally fell apart. Within seconds of a large earthquake, one side of the volcano broke loose, sliding into the valley as a landslide. Moving 100 kilometers per hour, the landslide ripped up trees and houses and buried an entire valley with rocks and mud. The landslide in this cartoon removed part of the volcano, leaving a hollowed out crater. At Mount St. Helens, a much larger landslide completely removed its top and north flank, leaving a gaping crater nearly two kilometers across. The missing part of the volcano ended up here, in the bottom of a river valley. The landslide traveled 25 kilometers down this valley. In places, it's more than 200 meters thick. The giant landslide at Mount St. Helens has helped geologists to recognize landslides at other volcanoes in the world. For example, the hills on top of the Mount St. Helens landslide deposit are identical to the hills found near Mount Shasta 
also in the United States. The Mount Shasta deposit is 10 times larger than the one at Mount St. Helens. Now we will consider volcanic tsunamis. Tsunamis are giant ocean waves that rush onshore with tremendous force. They may consist of one or more waves that follow one right after another. Tsunamis can be triggered by different types of volcanic activity, including giant landslides that slam into the ocean. This cartoon shows what happened during a volcanic landslide at Unzen Volcano in Japan about 200 years ago. Soon after the landslide entered the ocean, fishing villages across the bay were swept away by a tsunami as high as 10 meters. At least 15,000 people were killed. These unusual pictures were taken during a tsunami in Japan. Watch the incoming tsunami lift boats and buildings, carrying them more than one kilometer inland. When water from a tsunami rushes back to the ocean, buildings and people may be swept out to sea. These buildings were destroyed when a tsunami less than two meters high washed ashore during an eruption of Mount Cholo volcano in eastern Indonesia. Next, we will consider lava flows. Lava flows are formed by molten rock that erupts in fountains like these or pours across the ground from a vent. Molten rock can erupt from several vents at the same time, merging together to form a fast-moving river of lava. On steep ground, these rivers can flow as fast as 30 kilometers per hour. On flatter ground, lava flows spread out in broad sheets up to several kilometers wide and usually move less than one kilometer an hour. Most lava flows move slowly enough for people and animals to move out of the way. But everything else in the path of a lava flow is either burned or covered by molten rock. Even thin lava flows like this can destroy houses and roads. Farmland covered by lava cannot be used again for many years. Some lava flows move slowly, less than one kilometer an hour, sometimes less than one kilometer in a day. The edges of such lava flows can tower 30 meters high. The leading edges of these flows consist of hot rocks that roll down their steep fronts. People are not in danger from sluggish lava flows like these, as long as they keep a safe distance from the leading edge. But buildings don't stand a chance in the face of an advancing lava flow. The final type of hazard is volcanic gas. Every active volcano releases gas into the air. Most of the gas is from water boiled by volcanic heat. As the gas rises into the air, it cools and forms a cloud of steam hundreds of meters high. Volcanic gases rise from cracks and vents located on a volcano, both between and during eruptions. In addition to steam, sulfur gases are also released. Volcanic sulfur gases sting the nose and throat, and one type smells like rotten eggs. Most volcanic gases spread quickly into the air, becoming very dilute by the time they reach populated areas. The gas may irritate the senses for brief periods of time. 
Long-term exposure to sulfur gases, however, can damage crops and lead to the corrosion of metal. Volcanic gases rarely cause death or injury. But recent volcanic events have shown the harmful effects of two other types of volcanic gases, fluorine and carbon dioxide. An eruption of Longcomai volcano in Chile produced so much fluorine along with its ash that it contaminated grass and hay eaten by cattle, pigs, and other livestock. Fluorine causes joints to swell, but worse, can lead to death. More than 4,000 animals died after eating grass contaminated with fluorine. Carbon dioxide gas is equally dangerous. Carbon dioxide can be released from vents on a volcano or from crater lakes. In 1986, a large pulse of carbon dioxide gas was released from Lake Neos in Cameroon. It drifted over the crater's edge and down into a broad valley. Normally, carbon dioxide is invisible. Since it is heavier than air, the carbon dioxide sinks to low areas, replacing the air. Without air and oxygen, animals and people suffocate. This tragic release of carbon dioxide gas killed more than 1,000 people. These, then, are the principal volcanic hazards. Ash falls. Heavy rock fragments fall near the vent, but dust-sized ash particles blanket the countryside hundreds of kilometers downwind from a volcano. Ash is always a nuisance and can be dangerous, collapsing roofs, damaging crops and machinery, and disrupting transportation and communication systems. Ash flows. Fast-moving hot avalanches of rock and gas which kill everything in their paths. Mud flows. Rivers of mud that sweep down valleys tens of kilometers from a volcano. Mud flows rip up everything from along the river channel and can bury entire communities in mud and sand. Giant volcanic landslides. The collapse of part of a volcano onto surrounding low areas. Landslides can travel several tens of kilometers and bury valleys with debris several hundred meters thick. Volcanic tsunamis. Giant waves in the sea or a lake caused by volcanic landslides or submarine eruptions. Lava flows. Flows of molten rock that are rarely dangerous but leave the land completely useless for generations. Volcanic gases. Sometimes invisible and odorless, volcanic gas is usually only an irritation. But long-term exposure to gases can kill vegetation and corrode metal and fluorine and carbon dioxide gas can be deadly in high concentrations. Study these hazards carefully. By understanding the effects of volcanic eruptions, we can take steps to avoid their deadly consequences. Remembering recent volcanic disasters is a first step toward preventing future volcanic tragedies.